Infocom presents the Crescent Hawks Revenge. Hey there YouTube, Rick from Invo Gaming here and today I am going to talk to you about Battletech. Now for those of you who don't know, Battletech is a pretty popular science fiction setting that's been around since the 80s and first started off as a board game but quickly expanded into other media such as novels and video games. With the new MechWarrior Online, MechWarrior 5 and upcoming Battletech game from HBS, I thought it'd be nice to show you the first three games from the series. Starting off with the very first game by Infocom in 1988, The Crescent Hawk's Inception casts you in the part of Jason Youngblood who's been thrown right in the middle of an invasion of the planet he's on. Shown in a semi-isometric view, this game featured light role-playing elements, character development, a huge open world to explore, turn-based tactical combat with animated sequences, the ability to customize your mechs, and take part in a compelling story that is considered canon in the Battletech universe. Released on multiple platforms such as Atari, Amiga, Apple, Commodore, and IBM, this was a great first entry for the franchise into the world of PC gaming. Moving on to the sequel release, The Crescent Hawks Revenge in 1991, developed in conjunction with Westwood Associates who would go on to develop Dune 2 and the Command and Conquer series, again has you playing the role of Jason, but departing from the previous RPG style game, this one was an early tactical RTS where you commanded up to a company of mechs in a campaign that spans the Succession War and Clan eras. This game included features that were relatively new at the time, such as digitized speech, concepts such as unit persistence between missions, movement waypoints, and limited ammunition. It proved to be quite a challenging game. And finally, we have the original Mech Warrior developed by Activision in 1989, and a franchise that is still going strong with Mech Warrior Online and the just announced Mech Warrior 5. Again, departing from the style of previous games, MechWarrior 1 was an early generation first person simulation game. Set near the end of the Third Succession War, you play the part of a mercenary who is hunting for the people that killed his family. The game has you negotiating mercenary contracts, hiring pilots, buying and selling mechs, and engaging in a variety of missions on different planets. The graphics, although pretty simplistic, captured the imagination of older folks such as myself back then. Okay, let's take a look at the boxes now. So, start off with the first one, cover art as seen earlier. Back, we've got a description and screenshots. Now, what always uh, bothered me about uh, this screenshot here is I've completed the game and on subsequent playthroughs, I just can't figure out how the hell they managed to get four mechs and like eight guys on the team. Because there's absolutely no way. The most I ever got was three mechs and five guys total, including the pilots. So let's open it up. Uh, you're gonna have to ignore the fact that I lost the original discs. Uh, you had to make uh, a player's disc and a data disc on the Commodore, and I can't remember where the uh, original disc went. So you have the manual, which you needed for copy protection, because uh, you'd have uh, an exam that would ask you what part is this on this mech, and refer to that. What's also interesting is they included a second copy protection at near the end of the game so you couldn't finish the game unless you had the manual. And you needed to refer to this map. An offer card for a Ralpartha lead miniature. A flyer. Weapon and mech recognition guide. A lot of hand-drawn art in this stuff. Reference guide. And a very, very, very nice poster. Some bullets you can see here. It's basically an expanded version of the cover art. Pull that flyer for Battletech products. Um, 
registration cards, and the Infocom catalog. Now, they were best known for their text adventures. First one, let's go on to Crescent Hawk's Revenge. So that's just IBM screenshot since this was only released on IBM. Floppy disks. And a really thick manual. But fortunately, it's not on just how to play the game. They also included stats on all the mechs in the game, and as you can see, there are a lot of mechs in here. So they pretty much took the entire 3025 technical readout and slapped it into the game. And they also included maps of all the levels. It's pretty nice. Again, another poster. Basically all the mechs and vehicles in the game on a nice little uh, ID poster. Finally on to MechWire. Nice cover art. Uh, Pretty much a photograph of uh, a Warhammer model. Back and IBM screenshots. Floppy disks. Really thin manual this time. See, the only original design in here was the Jenner. Everything else was taken from like Robotech or some other Japanese anime. A little mini poster slash flyer. Activision uh, catalog. And the affidavit of uh, Gideon Braver Vanderberg, so sort of like a little mini short story. Coupon for uh, a sound card back when, um, you know, sound cards weren't built into the motherboard on a PC. And a software registration card. So there you have it, the first three Battletech games. I hope you enjoyed my videos and please leave a comment below if you've played these games and let me know your thoughts. And please like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.